Hey guys, what's up? It's Madison. I am here at Facebook. About to do my first ever Facebook Live. Um, I'm excited and some of you guys submitted questions beforehand, so I'm going to read these first and then I'm going to um, talk to you guys live. So if you have any questions that you haven't asked yet, um, get them ready because I'm going to be answering them after this. So my first question I have is how would you describe your style? Mm, that's really hard. I would probably say that my style is like a little bit more on the lazy end. Like I don't really wear like things like this so often. I'm usually in a hoodie and sweatpants and uh, that's about it. That's about as good as it gets. But when I'm doing things like this I try to look a little bit better. Maybe like a crop top, some, you know, some jeans. That's kind of my vibe. I always wear something big to cover myself. I don't I don't know what that is. Maybe it's an underlying insecurity. I don't I don't really know, but it's it's always I always have something big, whether it's a big hoodie or a big jacket or something. So, I don't really know. Lazy, I guess is how I would describe my style. Um, okay, next question. Dear Society is so explicit in expressing your feelings. Will there be other songs similar to Dear Society as a denunciation of those who have abused your feelings, your success and your growth? Ooh, I want to know who asked this question. Like we should be friends. Um Dear Society is, I, I honestly, don't, I have so much to say about this song and I want to not rant for two hours, so uh, it's just, it's meant a lot to me that you guys have really, like, ingested this message that I've tried to put out there. I was really nervous that people were kind of going to reject it and not want to be a part of this, you know, awareness that I was trying to raise of the society we currently live in and like where we put our self value and how we spend most of our time and uh that's kind of what I was trying to get across with this and it definitely means a lot to me that you guys have let this like resonate with you and you've genuinely taken time to understand it and um it's also cool seeing you guys try to like decode the video as much as you can because the video has so many metaphorical like underlying meanings behind it and a lot of those being what's kind of happened to me in the industry. I was signed and dropped by the time I was like 16 years old and the ending where I'm in the dark by myself is kind of like the reality and the sad truth of like me feeling like I was left in the dark slightly and like I was, you know, I don't want to say abandoned, but like I guess abandoned. And yeah, I don't know. I, I, I definitely wanted that to play into this bigger picture of where we are now as a society and Instagram and Facebook and all this stuff and how, you know, we're always kind of streaming and watching and doing this and uh, want everyone to be able to not only do things like this. This sounds very hypocritical as I'm sitting on Facebook Live, but that's really what the message is. And there's definitely going to be more songs like that. Everything on my new album is really true and real and um, expressive of my honest emotions. I feel like I have never really been vulnerable with you guys music wise. I feel like a lot of my music has been kind of that like I'm a badass, I'm cool kind of thing and I definitely want to be a little bit more open and honest and uh, that's why I'm excited for this next chapter because that's definitely what it is. So yeah and thank you for understanding that. Um, which fictional character would be the most exciting to meet in real life? By the way, I'm only reading these questions for the first time, so if I'm, like, god-awful, please forgive me. Um, which fictional character would be the most exciting to meet in real life? Uh, Rick or Morty, I guess. Uh, Rick, I'm gonna say. Morty would probably get annoying, but Rick, for sure. Uh, when do you feel the most empowered? What do you think is the key to feeling so? I feel the most empowered when I'm on stage and I'm performing and you guys are like screaming and cheering for me. That's definitely when I'm the happiest and I'm the most empowered. So, yeah. And I think uh, the key to feeling empowered is confidence. It all comes from within yourself. You don't need to be on stage and have, you know, people screaming to give you validation. You just have to kind of like, you know, me stepping on the stage is when I feel empowered. It's not even, like, the crowd. I don't know how to... Ex I sound stupid. I'm sorry. But, like, yeah. You just have to be confident in yourself. Um, what is the first thing you do after working? Uh, I always take a bath. I'm, like, clinically addicted to baths. It's kind of an issue. And I think I should see someone about it. But I'm, like, I take, like, five baths a day. Not so good for the environment, but, like, good for my soul. So, what was the most challenging part of making your debut album? And how did you overcome it? It was hard just to, like be so honest with myself and put myself back in a dark place. I mean, most of my album was, as it was being created, I was going through a lot of shit and a lot of personal stuff. So uh, it wasn't hard because I was 
in it, but it's hard because, you know, as you're going through things, you're, you're at the same time trying to heal and trying to overcome and, um, not be stuck in such a horrible place. But it was like, I had to be because I wanted to be for my album and, you know, uh, feel my feelings. Um, so that was definitely difficult having to not allow myself to progress. I was like, no, you have to stay in this fucked up place in order to make this real. And uh, I have an amazing team and my writers and producer and whatnot are just like my best friends at this point. And I don't know like if this album would have been possible without them because I, they just let me be myself, man. You know, they were like really wanting me to be vulnerable and honest and they would like sit and let me talk for hours and rant about my issues as I sobbed and they would be, you know, listening and typing at the same time and kind of writing down lines and pieces that I would say and that that ended up being my album. So like everything you guys hear are kind of like just lines that I spewed out while I was kind of crying and ranting. I mean, there are songs that are sexy and simple and happy and those are the songs that I made in the, honestly, like some of my saddest times because I was like, you know what, like, fuck this, I don't want to be crying anymore. I want to feel empowered. I want to feel sexy. I want to feel cute and like have something to be able to play when I'm depressed. So um, I hope I hope you guys listen to it and I hope you get a sense of vulnerability and healing and I also hope that you feel cute when you're getting ready or wherever or, or just in your life and you can like dance and sing and cry and just you know feel the roller coaster that I went through for so many months um but how did I overcome it just by by channeling it I always think in life when you're going through things channeling it into stuff that means a lot to you is the best way to get rid of it you know you gotta kind of apply it somewhere so what does 3553 mean? So this actually is a real tattoo. I don't know if you guys can see it. Do we have like a close up? It is real. People were like, is that just like, you can't really see it that well. You can't see it literally because it's on my finger and it's gone away. Like I didn't realize that finger tattoos went away that quickly, but apparently they do because mine is gone. I'm gonna get it retouched up so um, it's there. But it's my birthday and my brother's birthday. Three five is my birthday. Five three is my brother's, and um, three five five three has kind of always been like my number. And I wanted it to. It's weird because it adds up to sixteen, and the song came out on the seventeenth, so technically it came out the sixteenth at midnight. Well, that's technically the seventeenth, but you know what I mean. It's kind of weird that it was like in the same range of numbers, but. Numbers have always been weird to me. Like whenever I gamble in London, I because I'm only legal to gamble in the UK or in Europe, and I always put it on like three, five, or five, and I always win. So those are just my numbers, and I wanted to incorporate it. And um, I'm patient number three, five, five, three now forever. And this is going to be retouched. And by the way, shout out, but also like. I hate you guys who saw my, like, I have a tattoo on, for you guys in the room who don't know this, I have a tattoo on the back of my neck that says my album name, and I told them that on a live stream, I was like, guys, you guys will never know my album name until I want to tell you, and I got paparazzi the other day, and they saw it, and everyone was posting it, and they were like, we know it now, and I shouldn't have brought more attention to that, because now everyone's just going to go look for it, but don't, wait, please, gosh, I'm going to change it, no, I'm just kidding, I won't, it's literally Omni for life, so. All right, next question. What did you learn about yourself during the writing slash recording process of Dear Society and your album? Uh, I mean, so much. I don't, it's so hard to like, I, 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 I need like three hours to really talk about this stuff, but I, I feel like I've changed so much as a person since I started making my album, which is weird because like, you don't really change that much as a person over the course of a year, but I really did genuinely like, allowing myself to go to these places that I was always shutting off and like, you know, memories of mine that I was kind of trying to block out, bringing them back to life was definitely something that I feel like molded me a little more and like changed me a lot. And, um, Dear Society in particular was one that I really had to like think deeply about how I felt at a really young age being in the spotlight or whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, so, like, that line, like, been 21 since 17, like, I really have felt that way my whole life. I've, and that's, that's honestly, like, naughty, like, that's not even true. I've, I felt like I was, like, 30 since I was 12. Like, I've always been kind of not a kid, and, uh, it's, it's a double-edged sword for sure. Like, I have, I have moments of sadness and wishing that I had stayed in New York and been a kid for longer, and, uh, then I have moments where I'm like, you know, I wouldn't trade my life and my path for the world, because I'm where I am now today because of it, and I have you guys in my life because of that, so, um, 
I wouldn't trade it. It's just more like it's hard to face that sometimes, and that was the most difficult part. Um, but the main thing I learned, I guess, was just like that I'm, you know, I, I kind of learned that I'm like I'm, I'm, I'm a great person. Like I, I allowed myself to actually like under like I don't know how to say this without sounding ridiculous, but like I've, I've my whole life I kind of never wanted to be like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a great girl like I'm you know I I can chat like I, I have these skills like, I could channel my emotion and apply it to music and I I feel like my writers and producers and people around me were encouraging me to come there and be like you know what no like say that to yourself tell yourself you're great tell yourself you're awesome and tell yourself that you do have this amazing skill that not a lot of people have and um that was just a great that, that added to my confidence and that was like a very empowering feeling was to feel like I was great and be able to say that to myself and believe it for the first time so yeah what song on the album owns your heart or means the most to you? Damn. Um, I want to say Dear Society, honestly. Dear Society is, like, definitely my baby, but... <sighs> the one that owns my heart. I mean, there's just one... But it doesn't own my heart because it's not, like, a vulnerable song. It's kind of, like, my sexy, fun song that's coming very soon. It's my next, like, real, real single. Um... But that one doesn't own my heart because it's not like it doesn't like pull my heartstrings. I would say the one that gets me is uh, probably the ending of my album. It's really emotional and like makes me cry every time because it's kind of this. I'm not going to tell you. Sorry, I'm not telling you. But it's the last song on my album and you will hear it. And it's really sweet because it's kind of me making my album. That's all I'm saying cut me off please someone take this ipad away from me um what inspired you to be who you are today in other words who did you look up to um my mom i know that's like kind of the corniest most boring answer but my mom really did she's kind of just like the most amazing person i've ever met and i could be in the biggest fight with her and i'd still say that she's just superwoman and i know everyone says it about their mom but my mom is really like the one she's just like I've just never met someone in my whole life like her. Like, I really haven't. And she's so strong, and she's been through so much with me. Just, like, in regards to my career, but in my life, like, I'm not an easy person to, like, mother. So, um, I just am, you know, I'm constantly, I'm constantly scared to have kids because I'm, like, never going to be her. And it's just, like, damn, it's kind of sad knowing that, like, I'm never going to live up to be Tracy Beer. But, yeah, she's just incredible. And if, if you guys have met her or you know her or follow her or whatever, like, she's just an amazing, selfless, like, heartwarming person and she's just she's who continuously inspires me to do better and like making her proud is my greatest dream and my dad my dad's amazing too but my mom you know it's a mom thing um okay can we expect more tracks with the same vibes dear society on your album yep absolutely um everything's the same vibe but different you know if you listen to my album it's kind of all the same but different and I, actually that's not true everything sounds so different but like everything has a similar vibe we do live ones kate let's do it yes hi wow okay now i can see myself and it's kind of scaring me um wait i don't even know how to do this okay i'm so guys i'm the worst i'm literally like a 95 year old woman i'm not really tech savvy how did you create your society um how did we really, I mean, okay, so Dear Society really came about because we had this other song, and I was like, no, I want something like this, and I played some references, and they were like, okay, so I left the studio that night, and they made a song, which was Dear Society, without me, and I came in, and I was like, I like it, but, like, not really, and the chorus was, you're bad for my health. You're bad for my health. It was just, you're bad for my health, like, repeating over and over again. It was just that, um... And I just was like, yo, we have to kind of, like, rap or talk more. It has to be more, like, verbiage. So I was like, yo, that's for my health. I should probably get some help. I can't control myself. I'm addicted to the health. And they were like, that's tight. And I was like, okay, cool. So let's go with that. And then um, I didn't sing the lyrics like that. That'd be kind of wild if I just, like, spitball lyrics like that. But I did go, da 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 And they loved it, so that's how it came about. And uh, the first cor the first verse lyrics were actually, whiskey pills and cigarettes, my daily dose of internet. And I was like, it sounds like we're saying whiskey pills, like a pill of whiskey. And I was like, hey, I don't, I wanted everything to be really true to me too. I wanted the song to be very honestly my life. And I was like, I don't drink whiskey. And especially not whiskey pills. What even is that? I was like, I don't, I don't like this line. And we couldn't think of something else. And I was like, why don't we just say sleepless nights? Like, I don't sleep. I'm a, such an insomniac. So 
that's how that came about. But it was originally whiskey, pills, and cigarettes, my daily dose of internet. Um, I'm trying to think about the lyrics we changed last minute. I don't think we did. We did. Oh, the first verse was originally, Dear society, you pushed me to the edge, so here's some clarity. And it just never felt right to me. Like, okay, so what I just sang, the whiskey pills was the bridge, and then... Everything was just in a different order, in a different place. And I remember I was like, guys, we, this is, doesn't work. I was like, it sounds weird. And I, I, I had them mute the track, and I sang Sleepless Nights and Cigarettes as the beginning. And they kind of all went like this, and they were like, ah. And then when the bridge came around and I sang Dear Society, it sounded so sad in a beautiful way. And then um, I had to fight everyone about the yeah part, by the way. So that was all me. Everyone was like, no, we don't like it. We don't really like that part. It's like, yeah. And I was like, no, 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 no. We're keeping that in, so. Um. Is my dad commenting on this? What about your dad? Dad, I love you! <laughs> I'm sorry. He's like, um, excuse me. Sorry, I'm trying to read these questions. If I can't find one, I'm just gonna, like... Where do you get your inspiration for concepts you use in visuals and videos? I have been on Tumblr since I was probably 10 years old, and I just, like, reblog GIFs nonstop. I don't know if I should be talking about Tumblr at Facebook headquarters, but, like, I'm sorry, it's just true. And I literally have been, like, reblogging GIFs. Is that how you say GIFs? GIFs? I don't know. And since I was literally, like, 10 years old, and I basically, for my last tour, just pulled my favorite ones and used them as visuals. And, like, I don't know, when I make a song, I'm always seeing the visuals. So, yeah... Okay, do I go down or up? Like, is this the new ones or is this the new ones? Down. down. Okay, I'm so not tech savvy. Okay. The yeah part is the best part. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, what was your reaction when you hear your whole album? Honestly, man, like, I can't even tell you guys. I could listen to it over and over and over again. It's an hour and a bit long, so it kind of takes up a lot of my time. But, like, I just love it so much. So... If you could describe your album's vibe in three words, what would they be? I hate these questions because it's just not possible. Like, I can't do that. But I would, if I had to, I would say, like, no, I can't do it. I can't. Okay, these are done. I will give someone this. Thank you very much. Got a little Facebook thumbs up. Okay, I'm going to read your live questions, so please. Belgium misses you. I miss Belgium. How, how long do you guys want me on this? How many? Okay, cool. Is Blue going to be a single? Never know. Is there a date fixed for the album or not yet? There's a tentative date, but it's not, like, set in stone. But I think, maybe. Um, any tour soon? Yes. Yes, 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 there is a tour coming, and I'm really excited. What was your reaction when you saw the video where some girls did promotion for Dear Society? I was so emotional. You guys are so cute and so sweet and, like... I just can't believe you exist, too. It's kind of crazy. Like, it's really wild. Um, you're coming with me to get Dear Society tattooed. Tyler, I told you this. We're going. And I'm going to get a Rick and Morty tattoo. We're doing this. I'm not going to tattoo Dear Society because I already have, like, so many album tattoos. It's kind of, like, aggressive. I'm getting two more. Two more that are my album, like, titles of my songs on my album. My brain is not working today, but... Tyler, I'm going with you. I'll write it for you. No, don't get that. When people ask me to write tattoos for them, I'm always so uncomfortable because I have the worst handwriting. Like, I feel so bad that you have my handwriting on you. My handwriting's awful. Wait, someone said something good that I just skipped over. I would like to know, are you married? I'm not married. No. <laughs> what made you... I want to know what made you think I was married. Um, these are so funny. Madison Beer Tech is tough. Are you saying, like, I'm bad at tech, or are you saying that I'm good at tech? I don't know what that means, but thank you, or or not thank you. I thought you would say the name of the song. No, I'm not going to tell you guys the names of my songs. I'm really, like, I spill too much too soon. Is it June 29th? Um, sadly, it's not June 29th. I wish it was June 29th. Any movie inspiration this time? My My life is movie inspiration, so yes. Like, my album has... Um, Truman Show quotes and like, okay, being told to wrap up. I'm going to do one more question. Hold on. I want to find a good one. This is so much easier to navigate than an Instagram Live. Instagram Live is like so intense and so fast, so this is good. I get to actually read your questions. 
Stop saying the album name. I'm gonna kill you. Uh, I'm bad. I'm bad at tech. Okay, Dion. Thank you for clarifying. Guys, I'm answering one question. I'm waiting for someone to ask me one good question, and then I'm gonna skedaddle. Who says skedaddle? What's wrong with me? Like, I don't understand. Like, I'm genuinely so weird. Guys, come on. Come on. Okay, I'm gonna scroll up, because you guys are really slacking in this department. <laughs> OMG, it's the jacket. Is this, like, the jacket? <laughs> A lot of the comments are about my jacket. Guys, one more. You have one more chance. Okay, okay, we have a few more questions. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, are we getting more singles before the album release? Yes, you are. And that's going to be my final question because you guys are really slacking. But I love you. Um, Tyler, you need to relax because you are going to spill tea and I know I have not filmed that video yet um but I'm going to and I will FaceTime you when I do me and my me and my best friends slash like my biggest fan pages have a group chat and we FaceTime like nightly it's actually been like three nights I'm so sorry but I spill so much tea on them and if you don't stop I'm literally not telling you anything ever again um okay I'm gonna go but I love you guys this was really fun um I want to do this again I'm like looking at where to end it whenever I do Instagram lives I'm like so excited to end it because I'm so scared. But I love you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. This was a fun little, like, intimate one. And, um, yeah. Can't wait for you guys to hear the new stuff. Thank you for supporting Dear Society. It's been doing better than any of my other singles. So thank you. It means the world to me. And, uh, yeah. Very excited for this new chapter. And I will see you guys very soon. Bye!